Good Wednesday evening, folks. Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandage is here with you. It is Wednesday, October the 9th, 2024, and we are just hours away from Hurricane Milton making landfall right near the Tampa Bay area along the west coast of Florida. That landfall is imminent. Here's the latest headlines regarding Hurricane Milton. The worst conditions are happening now and building onshore over the next few hours. Landfall likely just south of Tampa. We're talking about Bradenton, Manatee County over in the Sarasota, most likely seeing the brunt of the strongest of the winds and the highest of the storm surge values. And we're also going to talk about a hazard that's a lot of times almost forgotten about with landfalling tropical system is tornado outbreaks. And there has been an epic tornado outbreak that's been preceding Milton's landfall in Florida throughout the day today. Hours and hours, over 12 hours ahead of landfall, we had those tornado outbreaks in the outermost bands. So here's how it looks on uh, infrared satellite imagery. We've got the latest uh, 7 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center, and that's unusual because usually we get it at 8 o'clock. They've been doing hourly updates all afternoon as we get close to landfall. Hurricane Center does that to keep you updated on the status of the storm and its location as it approaches the coastline. Right now, 120 mile per hour winds puts it firmly as a category three, a major hurricane. Notice here as we loop the satellite imagery that we do not see a visible eye anymore. That faded away as it's now encountering wind shear and it is in the process of weakening, just it's running out of time to weaken enough that it would lower the impact. We're still looking at a very impactful event here. Stretching things out here, notice how you look at it on satellite imagery. It's kind of stretched out from the southwest to the north and east, and that's the interaction with the jet stream. Upper level winds are actually tugging some of the higher level clouds and throwing it off to the north and east, and that's also acting to tilt the system and weaken it just a bit. Here's how it looks on radar. We're getting local radar sites out of Tampa and we're pulling it from Melbourne and also Tallahassee. But something you notice here with the sat with the radar imagery is that all of the rain is located mostly on the north side of the storm. Here's the center of Milton here, and there's a reason for that. If I switch back over to satellite imagery and put the water vapor filter on here, we can see that there's a lot of dry air getting pulled in from the north and west and undercutting the system to the south, cutting off rainfall on the south side of Milton, really moisture heavy on the north side and northeastern, and that unfortunately is building over land. So the flash flooding potential is greatly increased on top of the tornado threat, on top of the storm surge threat, and the gusty wind threat overall as well. Here's a close up imagery as we are again just a couple hours away from landfall. There is the center of Milton. Landfall is defined as when the center of Milton crosses over the coastline. So yes, the eye wall is beginning to build on in in Manatee and Sarasota, but that is not the center of Milton. We are still a couple hours away from that. Here's the center that's got a crossover land, likely coming in around 9, 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock tonight. It is moving to the northeast at 15, so that would put it basically in this trajectory, possibly the northern eye wall moving right into Tampa Bay and the city there with 120 mile per hour winds found in the northernmost eye wall. That's going to be the strongest winds just outside of that center of the eye. Here's how it looks in an hour loop. You can see its trajectory here. Now more of an easterly motion, pretty much right towards Sarasota and Manatee. We can switch up things here on the local radar to get a feel radar estimated winds. Now keep in mind when we are using this feature, the radar beam shoots out at an angle. So the farther we get away from the radar site, the higher up in the cloud deck it is sampling winds. So we are sampling some of the strongest of the winds here in the yellows well offshore, and that's at a pretty good elevation. So that's aloft. Is some of that making it to the ground? Possibly, uh, but that's where the strongest of the winds are now. Also to define kind of what you're looking at here, the yellows and reds are is wind that is outbound from the radar site here in Tampa. So this is blowing offshore. The blues and greens are winds blowing onshore inbound winds. So this is going to be where it's blowing onshore and causing the highest storm surge values down in Port Charlotte, Fort Myers right now, seeing those water levels rise and eventually near Sarasota, seeing some extremely high um, storm surge values. They're predicting anywhere from nine to 12 foot storm surge values by the time all is said and done. But let's get a sampling of some of these winds potentially aloft. 
84 miles per hour, 102 miles per hour, getting up in over 110 miles per hour, which that's pretty close being in line with the 120 mile per hour Cat 3 limit uh, that the NHC has placed on Milton as of the 7 o'clock advisory. Something you'll also notice here is you're finding the majority of the strongest of the winds offshore. There's a reason for that. The strongest of the winds are going to be over the ocean because there's lower frictional values. The winds will be stronger, nothing slowing it down. Once you move over land, the interaction with land immediately causes a frictional component and slows down the surface winds. Aloft, those winds remain very strong. And that's a reason why, too, that we get the tornado threat over land. You've got the change in wind speed and direction with height. The wind shear increases, and that causes spin-up tornadoes. And in this case, some of these tornadoes have been, you know, serious wedge tornadoes, strong tornadoes causing a lot of damage. I'm going to show you that in just a second. But I do want to take note of there in Tampa Bay at the mouth of the bay, clocking winds on radar at least of around 84 miles per hour, again, over water. Then as we get some samplings from radar closer to the radar site, so not too high off the ground, still gusty winds, but notice it's just a fraction of what's occurring just offshore. Now, there are two reasons for that, the frictional land component as well, but also these wind values are a little bit farther away from the center of Milton. That's to the south and west. What are some actual observed values in terms of wind gusts so far today? We're starting to see hurricane force winds make it onshore in Sarasota, a gust so far up to 77 miles per hour. Widespread area here seeing at least tropical storm force wind gusts, which is 39 miles per hour. And again, Milton is parked just to the southwest under 100 miles away from Tampa Bay. Of course, those gusty winds and the tornadoes that have been blowing on through Florida have caused already significant numbers of power outages. If you remember with Helene two weeks ago, this number was well over a million. I think we do get there again, but at this time, at the recording of this video, Florida has about 300,000 customers in the dark. That number will triple or even quadruple by the time all is said and done. All right, let's get to, to the tornado component of this system. We've got the onshore winds here, the outermost bands building up and over Florida. That frictional component slowing down the surface winds, winds aloft screaming fast. So we get that spin, we get the tornadoes to develop here and spin up and notice here all of the tornado warnings that have been popping on up issued by local National Weather Service offices over the last 12 hours. In fact, when you add them all up, it is an astronomical number. 121 tornado warnings issued. If you live in central Florida, odds are you were under at least one tornado warning through this afternoon. And that outermost band thankfully has lifted offshore for now. We'll likely see that tornado threat build into northeast Florida in just a short while. So here's the newest track, although track isn't so important anymore because we know where it's going to make landfall. Again, in the Tampa, Bradenton, Sarasota, Manatee County areas, in the next couple of hours. Category three probably will weaken a little bit, still remaining a category three at landfall though. With the land interaction, it's away from its fuel source, the warm ocean waters, right? So we're down to a cat one pretty quickly. In the middle of the night tonight, those winds drop down to 90 miles per hour, and then it emerges off the coast, off the east coast of Florida and into the open Atlantic, weakening as it does so, and heading well out to sea out to the east, no longer affecting anybody. So. That's the good news after we see this landfall. There's been numerous storms that we've seen make multiple landfalls or move farther inland and cause more issues, like Helene a couple weeks ago. This makes landfall heads east and out to sea. Anything else going on in the Atlantic that we need to be concerned about? Well, we've got Leslie that's still a hurricane. It was a hurricane weakened, and then now it's a Cat 2 hurricane or a strengthening forecast to strengthen to a cat two again. And of course, we've got Milton. Two other tropical waves we're watching right now, both of which have low chances of developing. If you're wondering, the next name on the list is Nadine. We'll see what happens there, but I think our activity in the Atlantic is not quite done yet. That's the latest on Milton. Again, imminent landfall within the next couple of hours. Worst conditions are building inland right now. If you have any questions, you can find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, X, and also on TikTok. Stay safe if you're in Florida this evening.